Hello and welcome to Steel Crew. Uh, in this video, I'm going to kind of go over the basics of driving the Sherman Firefly. This is a British variant of the Sherman tank. Uh, it's got a much larger gun. I forget off the top of my head of the caliber of this gun. And it's got some other differences, but um, this is a game for VR. It is in early access, so if there's anything that looks a little weird or we have bugs or glitches during these videos, just remember that this is a public play test that just came out today, uh, December 29th, the day that I'm recording this video. So, here we are. This is the head out position. Let's let's button up in order to do, you know, shut the hatch and get inside the driver's seat. And uh, in order to do that, we just take our VR hands here, which don't have textures yet, but they still, it's nice to have these. And we just click right there with our action button. Now let's kind of look around the the inside of the driver's seat, familiarize ourselves with the controls, our views, and everything that we have here before we really get anywhere. So first we have our viewport right here. This is a periscopic viewport, which means that this is not only a piece of bullet-resistant glass, but there's a mirror on the other side of that. And then if we come out right here, we can actually see that oops, there's another mirror right here, and this is actually where that viewport is looking out right here. This just protects the driver's eyes so they don't get hit by shrapnel. On the left, the top here are one, two, three, four, and five. That's our gear indicator. Uh, we don't have a parking gear or neutral. This is a automatic, or not automatic. This is a manual transmission vehicle. Uh, amp gauge, oil pressure, engine temperature, and fuel level gauges. We don't need to worry about those. Those don't really do anything right now in the game. This right here is our current damage, and it actually goes from zero to one hundred. Zero being we have zero damage, and 100 being we've died. Uh, Steel Crew does use a hit point based damage system, but it does calculate uh, bullet penetration. So when the shell hits, how much damage did you do based on range, velocity, angle it hits, and everything. Then we've got our speedometer right here. It just tells us how fast we're going. If you ever get it up to 60, I want to see a screenshot of that. And then we have our engine RPMs right there. Over here to our left, or to our right, I always get those confused. We've got our compass. Um, this is a, it is a magnetic compass, but it really would work inside of a tank too well, but this at least lets us know which way we're heading since we don't have a, any other way of telling that. Next, these are our hydrostatic, I believe they're hydrostatic? I'll have to look more into that, but these are our steering brakes. Now, full forward, the brakes are released. If I push the gas pedal, which we can see right there, we would. The tank will drive straight, and I'll go over how to actually utilize these. I love that it's even animated. Um, in a moment. Last thing we have here is our gear shifter. It is a. It's at a standard H. So we've got first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and of course reverse. So to drive this tank, first thing we're gonna do is I'm, I'm holding the brake. I'm gonna put it into first gear. Now, normal driving, you can drive with the hatch open like this, so that's how we will start. I just want to drive straight up to the top of that hill, so what I'm going to do is push the gas pedal. If you have actual foot pedals, they will work. If you don't, you'll have to check your key mappings for your particular VR headset. Now, as you can see, our RPMs are maxed out because we're in first gear, so we'll go ahead and shift it to second. A lot of your driving is going to be in first and second gear and a little bit in third gear. The tank doesn't like to handle rough terrain uh, in fourth or fifth or even third. Steering in third gear is a little difficult. Speaking of steering, in order to steer, we have to slow down one of our two tank tracks. In order to do that, let's say I wanted to turn left to follow the road. I'm simply going to grab the stick and pull it slightly. The more you pull, the harder that brake is applied on that side and the more the vehicle will turn. If I wanted to stop, I have two ways of stopping. I can pull both brakes back like this. Oh, let's get rolling again. We're on a hill also, I can start in second gear. Or I can actually press the brake pedal right there. It's not animated, but we can press the brake pedal to stop the vehicle. Driving in external view like this gives you a lot to see. You can easily spot, help spot on enemy tanks. You can look out for objects that may hang up the vehicle. Or you can even just chat to another driver. 
But in combat, you don't want to stick your head out like this because well, your head is soft and squishy and the tank isn't. So, button up. And this is where things get tricky because now you only have this little view. Now you're completely protected. Steel crew does mimic or does model crew damage. So if I'm sticking out like this and an enemy tank hits me with a machine gun round, that's it, I'm toast. <laughs> but if I'm here, I'm fine. So let's actually do a little bit of driving. We'll just drive down to the bottom of this hill. Here, and as you can see, we can use both of our throttle sticks, or brake sticks, shift gears, and just gently drive the tank down the road. We can watch our speed. Just like driving a manual transmission car, you kind of listen to the RPMs. Um, the Sherman, though, the clutch is actually that knob right there, so when you push the, when you grab the stick, you're effectively pushing the, the clutch in. And then we'll just go ahead and stop the tank here. Now, because we are using a transmission and brake, um, brake steering, we can't do a full turn like that, a full zero point turn, but we can, if we wanted to do, say, a hard right turn, we would pull this lever all the way back and give it power. And now that track over there is not turning but the tank is spinning in circles. And then as soon as we release it, the tank will move again. This has just been a super quick video tutorial on how to drive the Sherman Firefly. In the next video, I'm going to cover operating the big gun. And uh, in future videos, I, I will do covering the T-34. But I'm only going to do driving big gun, you know, being the gunner and the commander today, because I don't have so much energy. So yeah, we'll catch you in the next one.